sadly, <laughs> sadly, we've been through this before. And we're going to be fine again. We're going to be fine again. We're going to be good. We're going to, yeah, we're going to Rapture. The fallen city beneath the waves. Hello, beautiful wife. You okay? You're wearing shoulder pads today. You look a bit like Spaceman. Check the shoulder pads out. Spaceman. Look at these. These are poofy. I like them. They're poofy. Look at your broad shoulders. Yes, dude. Benching. Yeah, you're going to tackle me later? I can only hope. <laughs> Don't get me. Don't get me. Oh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be an emotional day. That we, we we're likely as a primarily World of Warcraft streamer to attract a lot of questions from people who do not ordinarily hang out here. It's likely it's gonna happen, guys. Let's the space packs that is gonna go down. We're gonna have all sorts of people dropping in with all sorts of weird and wonderful random takes. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. They're coming. They're, yeah, it's gonna be all day. But we are over in the Bioshock category, so perhaps they're browsing the World of Warcraft category. Uh, and see what's going on. What happened? I suggest you read it yourself. A two-year, a two-year investigation by the state of California into Blizzard specifically. Uh, it is Activision Blizzard, but it is the World of Warcraft team specifically of rampant sexual harassment uh, and quite a lot of bullshit uh, towards women in a most horrific, horrible way. Because apparently not being a complete fucktard is too hard. Uh, that's what uh, we're taking away from it. Is apparently that is just too difficult for some people. So it has to be un it has to be gross and disgusting, and you know, just an awful place to be uh, for these people. Yeah, it's not that hard. It's not. It's really not that hard to not be a complete piece of shit. Uh, it's really not that hard. It's pretty easy. You just think, would I want this to happen to my mother? Would I want this to happen to my daughter? Probably not. Probably not. And there you go. There's your answer. No, not really. My sister. Yeah, you know, my cousin, my aunt, and any other person in the world. Me. <laughs> Would I like this to happen to me? No, not really. Uh, but there you go. So it's going to be one of those things. Pretty pissed off again. It does seem like I said this on Twitter this morning. It's like every six months, it seems for us, something just fucking happens that just spoils something we enjoy. It really does. It does seem that seems to be happening around every six months, although it is weekly for some. But uh, for us, it seems to be like every six months we wake up to some... I have to sit there in bed going, oh my god. And I'm not like... Not woe is me, but it sucks for all of us, right? It sucks for everybody, and it sucks in general. Have I read the statement? I did. <laughs> where they were sort of blaming California. <laughs> <laughs> for checking <laughs> so uh, it's it's been a bit of a weird thing it's a weird thing it makes me also very uncomfortable knowing i was saying this to emma this morning it's like can you i can't i can't imagine right as a guy a married guy as well like it was a, it just i don't see this stuff right and i'm pretty sure the predatory men out there who are like this I think they sense, I think they genuinely sense other men who probably wouldn't be into their behavior very quickly. And that therefore, I don't see it. I don't see it. Ever. And I meet these people who are now accused of this and have been in the past, as we well know. We had the same with Method Josh. Right? I've met Josh. I was asked to work with him and all these kinds of people. And they're very nice to me. And they're typically extremely nice to Emma as well. Why? They want us to have a good impression of them. Because we have the voice that is heard. And generally speaking, these awful people do come into our lives and are different people. They're not texting me these horrible things. And and, and it's, it's very fucking... It, the level of mistrust, or distrust, I should say, that it builds is extraordinary. An extraordinary level of distrust. Because you meet people and you're like... It's really nice to me, you know, like, how can I say a bad word about this person, you know, and then you find out they're a complete piece of shit. Uh, but you just never see yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're just like, well, fuck me, dude. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's... Do you think their sudden swap to all things inclusive last year was to hide the investigations? It seems to line up. It was weird. It was weird. I have to say it was a little it was a little strange but at the same time and th this is the kind of thing we've dealt with in the past i talked about the uh, i mentioned it on twitter this morning is the last blizzcon i went to there was an extraordinarily sh an extraordinary shift from the last blizzcon 
which had some inclusivity stuff to being a very big deal. They dedicated a part of the Anaheim Arena to inclusivity. And I think it was called the Inclusivity Nexus. I think that's what they called it. And there was a lot of pride badges. There was a lot of panels which were like specifically titled women working at Blizzard and how good it is to be a woman working at Blizzard, right? <laughs> and it was yeah, really... There was. there was a panel for that. There was huge panels of stuff like this. And we were like... You couldn't help but feel it was just exactly the same as Pride Day this year when, you know, people compared, like, the Coca-Cola logos. Where in the US and the UK, they were all Pride Coca-Cola logos. Yet in Dubai and the Middle East, they would, didn't do anything for it, right? Because it's bad for business. It's all about money. It's all about money. And it had this sort of superficial gain to it. But at the same time, it was during that period, which was a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, where there was a bigger push for trans acceptance and LBGTQ plus acceptance and all that. So it kind of was like, for the, for, you know, part of the course. Let's say that. Part of, yeah, part of the course. Every company's doing it. They're making these big pushes. It just seemed a little strange. It seemed a little out of place. And it seemed a little forced, I guess it would say. But at the same time, it's something that needs to be addressed. So, okay, no problem, right? And then you find out it was around the same time that certain people were leaving Blizzard, right? And certain people were on those panels and those kinds of things. And now it gives it that different sour taste to your mouth. It was like, are you starting the PR savior now? Are you starting to put the footwork in to say, we've changed. Look, for like years now, we've been pushing inclusivity and all this kind of stuff. to tick a box. And it makes you feel that way, even though it might not have been that way. But it does make you feel that way when you're there. Because you're like, wow, this is kind of... This is, it just seems a little odd. Like it seemed a bit heavy for what it was. What it was. Yeah, it, it feels that way, and you're just like. And of course, as gay, and there is nobody here is immune to this. Gamers instantly make awful, inappropriate jokes about all that kind of stuff. So you can imagine a BlizzCon, which is one of the sweatiest places in the world. I mean, I love BlizzCon and I love meeting everybody, but it's a very sweaty place. Let's be clear. When they're seeing all this LBGTQ plus stuff, and they don't really get it, as most gamers don't. They've never had to face, you know, that kind of discrimination. It's a big joke. We're all woke now. We're all strapping, you know, pride flags to our faces and all that kind of shit. You know, it's a big joke and all that. And it was, it was, it's, it, that's the way it was at the time. <laughs> so it was, it just gives that awkward tilt and the slant to it. Uh, do you think uh, you could host a charity of Drive to Donate something? Well, here's the awkward thing. And I said, <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing a WoW charity thing today. Today, I'm supposed to be doing a thing with Echo for a very good charity. For a very good charity on mental health, a charity we've worked with before, the people from Rad. I'm supposed to be having a DPS competition with Roger Brown today, and the loser gets like a cake to the face and all that kind of stuff. Probably, and, it, yeah. and it was sorted out last night as we're supposed to be doing this thing for the Rad charity because it's an extremely good charity through the medium of World of Warcraft. And I was looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. And then I wake up today and it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. We're trying to do something nice. But then, but then, you know. Still support that charity. I don't blame anybody for playing World of Warcraft. I, mean, I, I really don't. I like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I, I, I see a lot of people who are like, Mike, you need to uninstall and do all this all the way. Look, that's going to be a personal decision for each and every person because... If the head of, if you know, if someone who's the head of FIFA or the, the the manager of a football club turns out to be a sex pest and all that, the teams don't disappear or anything like that. I don't blame anybody for playing World of Warcraft. I don't. The thousands and thousands of people who contributed to World of Warcraft, it is very few. And I know it seems like a lot because of how loud it is, but it is very, very few. Um, <laughs> it is very few who cause these massive problems for something we love. It's it's just not. You, everyone needs to make their own personal choice on that kinds of things. Uh, yeah, you need to make your own personal choice on those kinds of things. But I don't blame anybody for playing World of Warcraft right now. I really don't. And I don't blame streamers who need to pay their rents aside to World of Warcraft for doing so, right? I mean, what's my plan? I don't know, right, man? I'm still compressing. I'm still fucking ingesting this, right? This happened for, for me. This is an hour old news. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is like an hour and a half old news at this point. It's like, what the fuck, man? You're still taking it in. It's like, did I meet any of these people? Have I shaken their hands? I don't think I have, actually. I never met Alex Afriasabi, if that's his name. I never met that guy. Uh, but it, it, that's, it's like... I don't know, dude. 
Yeah, you're still taking it all in. You can't just go and make decisions straight away. Uh, it was happening while Morheim was there. Morheim unquestionably knew what was going on. It's been uh, happening for a long time, according to the allegations. Yeah, A long time. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, no doubt. No, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt at all. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, the passing nudes around of that lady around the office. No one would ever give me that. Because I've never seen a, girl, a guy's girlfriend's nudes. Do you know what I mean? No one would ever give that to me. And it's like, I'm almost blind to this stuff. Which makes it that much more awkward and untrustworthy of other people. Is People would not show me nudes of their girlfriend. No one would ever do that. Because I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? And they know that would be the reaction. They know there'd be a reaction is like, that's fucking gross. Like, as if I would show off nudes of you. Anybody. Exactly. It's like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> like, absolutely not. Like, it's just not one of those things we would deal with. Really not. <sighs> uh, I haven't seen that interview, Sintry. No, I haven't. Uh, we're going to be playing by the Bioshock franchise. This was on the cards for a while. This is actually nothing to do, although it fell really nicely with uh, what's happened with World of Warcraft today. Uh, we were even planning this. In fact, the stream, regular stream viewers will be actually pissed that it took this long to get here. But yeah, <laughs> we, the Bioshock replay through is uh, a project that me and Nups are working on. So that is why we're here today. It just happened to fall today, but that's uh, it's not a statement. I think I just want to make that clear. We're not playing Bioshock because of a statement of not playing World of Warcraft. We were doing this anyway. It just fell quite nicely because we would not be playing World of Warcraft today. Um, it's not it's it's not just a Blizzard problem. No, I that's I think a lot of people are targeting specifically because this current event is about Blizzard. Um, I don't know. I mean, there are people who hang out in my chat who work at Blizzard. Uh, who are girls, who are trans, and all sorts. And I've never heard... I don't know whether the EU is different. I don't know whether the EU side of WoW is a different environment entirely. I've never heard of that kind of harassment. And that's what makes it all that more shocking to me, is I spend a lot of time in this environment, but whether or not I kind of repulse that kind of conversation, I don't know. And that's what makes me question things, is like... Would I know more if I was different? I don't know. I don't know. Or do people just try and appease me? Which is what I feel like happens a lot with corporate stuff. Is they try and appease me. Uh, make make me happy. Because, <laughs> you know, it could end badly for them monetarily and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I don't know if it's different. I don't know. They've never told me. And I trust the people working there that they would. But it is a world problem. It is. The only misogynistic environment I ever worked in was a temp agency set me up in an engineering office. Uh, and that place was crazy misogynistic. And I left after two days. I was like, it was creepy. It was 20 men and one woman. And the way they spoke to her was gross. And I was like, this is weird. I was like, why are you talking like that? Like, it was like 1921. It was so bizarre. See, I worked in sales, didn't I? So yeah, you worked in traditionally, sales. Traditionally, like sales, it's sales men. Mm. So as a woman in sales, you are... You are objectified, you know, you are like, you know, you've I would, got a, I mean, I would argue it's expected of you you've got to a look nice. Look pretty. Yeah. yeah, like when I was pregnant, I couldn't go and visit a customer because they fancied me. So if I was pregnant when I went to see them, they knew I had a husband or a partner. So I was only allowed to do telephone calls with them. So they Was that still, an order you were given? So they would still buy from me, yeah. Was that your like, manager gave that Yeah, order? they were like, don't go and visit them um, because you're pregnant. So obviously you're not available. So therefore they won't buy as much and about the no. time you thought that was a reasonable suggestion i was just like just wanted to hit my target so i did it and we would never get that right <laughs> no one would say that to us ever i mean I, I was a, i was a manager of a sales team i would never say that to any of my staff they were all guys well, as it you want to but... hit your targets don't you you don't want to be the the shit person on the team at the end of the month so you just do what you do <sighs> yeah it's just <sighs> No one would ever... It, it, that's the thing. We don't get it, I guess. Uh, no, I don't guess. It's just that we don't. We don't get it. Because no one would ever say that to us. It's just not something we deal but with. But then I didn't see it as a problem either, though. Because you probably understood what they were trying to say, right? Ooh, Which, yeah, because it's, you're not available. It's, well, that's the point. It's normal. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah, <laughs> it's normal. Like normal. Yeah, it's normal. It, the, should you that should, not you, be normal, no? It should not be normal that you can't speak to your customers... Because there's a foundation that he might want to fuck you. No, that should not be normal. 
but and then I'm, I'm unavailable because I was pregnant. You're there to sell a product, right? And you, and you, you're not. And the, the sad thing is, it's probably true. Is if he didn't think he could fuck you, there's a chance he would. He would buy it. Yeah, he wouldn't yeah, buy as much. True. Yeah, that's the, that's the reality that needs to change. That reality there is like, oh, I like it when Emma visits me. Yeah. Because she's, I kind of want to look at her tits. Right? Although she's selling something, it's because I want to look at her boobs or her ass yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? And, you know, have a little fucking self fantasy about the whole situation. Yeah. So I couldn't visit him when I was. <laughs> you can't walk alone at night? Well, you're always terrified of yeah, streets. Yeah, I walk out at night. Yeah. Which, at and all. you always say to me, I'm like, I've been yeah. like that for years. You've been like that forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been like that forever. It's like, I'm not walking down there. I'm not doing that. Which I never feel that way. It's like, I'll, I'll go out at three o'clock in the morning no matter where we're going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Give me the walk. That, it is true. It shouldn't be, but ultimately it is, you know? And it needs, to, that's it what is. it could do with changing, right? Because I can't imagine every day I wake up to go to work. Like, let's assume I wasn't a streamer. I was back in the office in the sales environment, right? And thinking maybe I should dress like a couch today because that guy's always trying to grab my ass and look at my tips. And every day. And that's what the situation is when you work in the office like at Blizzard, right? Or at these other companies that have had this problem. Is this guy has a suite at BlizzCon nicknamed the Cosby Suite. Right? That's the reality. It's a, a running joke that this is nicknamed the Cosby Suite. Yeah. Can you imagine every single fucking day... You have to consider what you're wearing or where you're going to sit to be as far away from that person or yeah. to not have to interact with that person. Every day yeah. that you're there for eight, nine hours a day and you have that going on in your head because we don't deal with that. I worry about whether my shirt's ironed, right? That's what I worry about. It's like, oh, I've got time to iron my shirt or whatever. That's it. That's literally the limit of my concerns when I go into the office. And it's like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I saw that tape um, where they had to justify the holiday. So it, I think it was um, an African lady. And um, nobody else had to say why they needed the holiday time. And she had to write a page document on why she wanted to go on a holiday. Like what she was going to use the holiday time for. I mean, that's just... Cheery. And then there's me, because I've argued with you a million times. It's like, you don't have to tell them shit. Like, when you quit a job, you're like, what shall I write? Shall I write a paragraph well, and essay? I'm like, no, you, you just I've said the line saying I'm not working for you anymore. That's it. Yeah, but you, it doesn't work like that, does it? Yeah, it does for me, because I've done that. It, for me, when I quit a job, I've literally wrote, I will be leaving your employment. One line, signed. That's it. If they ask me what I'm doing, I can choose to answer or not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I expecting our dogs to be born in a few days in a fucked up world. Yeah, well, we can all help to change it by... But th that's the thing. We can all... We can do things to change it. I'm not virtue signaling here. You just... But at the same time, I feel now that when th that these guys detect each other, I really do feel like that. And it might be an off-the-cuff comment like, uh, is you... Oh, you, well, maybe you put your wife in the kitchen or something like that. And I would just go, no. You know what I mean? Like, it just wouldn't be a thing. Oh, uh, when kids are... Referred, you're looking after the kids is babysitting for guys because that happens a lot it's like oh, oh well dad's babysitting it's like these are my kids i'm not babysitting you know what's funny though and i think like <laughs> you know with all this oh you know you can change it and all that but the people that are having babies or that have got young kids like it's our job as parents to bring the boys we've always told the kids that yeah, yeah. Moral, you know yeah. it, it starts like literally from birth like you know you 100%. teach your daughter it, it's not acceptable we teach our boys it's not acceptable and boom that's it like from now like the end of time that's how it should be yeah our kids have, have no things about women being lesser or anything no, like that not at all no puberty will hit and they'll get the stern stern r r the same thing i did i never looked at women like that i mean obviously we're attracted to women but you, you there's a line that goes that seemingly is not there for so many people <laughs> and power certainly makes that so much worse like a little bit of authority a little bit of power that makes it so much worse uh yeah Carried your keys between your fingers, yeah. Do you know what? I won't even get in a taxi on my own um, at Tiarana. Like, I would not, would I? If I had to come home from Manchester on my own, I would not, I wouldn't get in a taxi. No. And mm. if I did, I'd have to send, like, my reg to my mum and dad and everything. Mm. It's just scary. Yeah, it's it's very hard to understand, as I think, as, as guys, like most guys, it's pretty hard to understand. That yeah, we just because we... I bet the women in the chat are all the same. I wouldn't get in a taxi alone. I wouldn't get in a taxi. Yeah. Like well, someone said to me the other day, it's like, can you imagine? Uber's alone. No, exactly. 
How many men would though? You wouldn't well, even think twice. Well, about no, this is the context because someone said this to me about a year ago, and it, it kind of stuck with me. It's like, can you imagine that when you walk down the street, at least fifty percent of the people you see could be beat you to death with their hands, right? Because men are generally bigger and they're generally stronger. Like every day you walk down the street, at least fifty percent of the people you see around you, if they chose to, if they were slightly unhinged, could beat you to death or do whatever with their bare hands. And I'm like, no, I don't consider that at all because that doesn't apply to me, at all. <laughs> that Everyone's doesn't. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like for women, that's a very normal thing is to be like, literally everybody around here could beat me to death, and it's like, what the fuck. <laughs> what the fuck if you think about it in that context that every single day that's something that's in your head is if like if one of these guys just decided to go for it i'd be pretty fucked i'd be pretty fucking screwed up and it would suck and it's bad <clears throat> it's pretty bad mm. yeah you got patrick's got us too good what kind of world i grow up in yeah we just do our best right patrick that's all we can do that's all any of us can do we can do our best because these are a few people they're not a lot but it's the same thing we hear with terrible news stories and all that these few make such a problem. It's a problem. It can happen to a lot of guys, but it's not the time and place for that. Act, you know, even like not everybody's jacked. That's the point, actually. That's the point. I doesn't need. You don't need to be jacked. That's bullshit. That's fucking movie bullshit. Most guys, without doing a single day of doing lifting or anything, can still do that to a woman. Right. That's the thing. It's nothing to do with being jacked or ripped or fucking proteined up. Nothing to do with that. Your average guy can do that. Your average kids normal kids guy. Yes. Like, and that's why, yeah. Korea, a 19 year old walking home, random. The boys are as big as you. And killed her. It was Max's as big as yeah. me now. Yeah. Our seven year old son is nearly as big as Emma now. Right? Do you get it? It's just average guys. It's nothing to do with being big, tough motherfucker, coke, coke headed up juicers. Your average guy. Are we having sausages? <laughs> that's his biggest concern. <laughs> Yeah, average guys. Are the look when you see serial killers and stuff, they're not big jacked up dudes. Get out of here. <laughs> see, we're bringing this one up right. All he wants is a little sausage. Out. Yeah, his only concern is sausage. Oh well, we'll get some sausages. 